Welcome to the wash station. This is where we, well, wash things, I guess. Vegetables mainly, um, but I haven't done any of that. Mainly I've been washing things like vegetable tubs and seedling pots. Um, so a couple days ago, um, we had a seedling stand set up over there. You'll have to imagine it, it's not there now. But I wanted to film people coming and picking up their seedlings. So I said, you know, is there something I could be doing around the entrance of the farm um, while I'm waiting for people to show up? And, you know, the wash station's right here, so she handed me a, a few trays of pots and said, well, you know, these need cleaning. Okay. So, um, after the first couple hundred pots, I started to think, you know, I wish I could be doing something more productive, something more useful on the farm with my time, instead of just being, you know, stuck here washing pots. And I sort of kept thinking about it, and it's like, that's not true. These pots need to be washed. If I don't wash them, someone else is going to have to do it later. It's a useful job. It's farm work. It's not planting or weeding, but it's useful. And it kind of got me thinking, you know, why do I prioritize weeding over washing? What's, what's more important there? They both need to be done. Why do I think that washing isn't useful? But my perception, my internal monologue was saying, well, you know, you're not doing, you're not contributing. Well, why is that? You know, um, I'm here, I'm trying to make people care about their food, make, make people value their food, and here I am doing the same thing with cleaning. So how does that work? I mean, it just sort of, there's certain things that we, we want to be clean, but we don't prioritize. We don't think it's important. We don't want to pay for it. But it still has to be done. Why is this less important than planting seeds? Why is planting seeds less important than anything else? Why do I make $900 as a sound guy and farmers struggle to get by? It makes no sense. But this is our, this is a reflection of our priorities. So, yeah, I'll learn lessons from cleaning. Last week I said something that kind of got under the skin of a farmer that I know. Um, Bill Eggert let me know that uh, I said something that wasn't very nuanced, which was, I think I said, regular farmers, they just dump poison on it and call it a day. I was talking about why there's so much weeding involved in organic agriculture. And he's right. That's not a very nuanced view of things. Um, I don't think it's a fair characterization of any farmer, organic or otherwise, to say that they just dump poison on it. Um, I think if you're a regular farmer, um, pesticides and herbicides, they're tools. You use them to manage um, weeds and pests on the farm, and organic farmers have the same challenges. They're just the tools that they use are, I guess, less synthetic. Um, there's still some organic um, pesticides and herbicides that get used, but um, I wanted to share, I guess, how my understanding of organic has changed since I started looking at it from a farmer's point of view. Because I've been eating organic my whole life. Um, and if you go to a supermarket, organic, it's really just a shorthand for no pesticides. And that's not really how a farmer has to look at it. Um, it's true, the, or the organic movement started. It was a response to Rachel Carson's Silent Spring, which was an expose on uh, a pesticide, DDT, which was being sprayed everywhere, not just on farms, on forests, all over the place to kill mosquitoes and many other things. Um, and these farmers wanted no part of it. So they had to figure out, well, if we don't have access to these tools, these potent, potent tools, and we do have a pest problem, we have rats or we have um, a weed outbreak, how do we control them? And so it forced them to start thinking more, I guess, ecologically. Um, they started, it forced them to pay closer attention to plant nutrition, to, oh, is there another predator, to, are we planting too much in one place and that's attracting all these deer. Um, so it got them, I guess, looking more, and I hate to use this word, holistically, uh, about the farm. So I think if there's a difference between organic and conventional agriculture, it's really just that I guess, philosophical difference. A regular farmer is focused just on the crops that they're growing. How do you maximize the amount that you grow of that crop? Whereas an organic farmer 
It's more about how do we create a whole system that produces life overall. And maybe it doesn't produce as much lettuce or as much wheat as the conventional field, but overall it's a healthier ecosystem. I think that's the difference that I've learned. These are green onions. Uh, we planted them at the beginning of the week. And um, the phrase that was running through my head at the time was, I love the smell of green onions in the morning. And that phrase kind of stuck with me a little bit because it's, it's kind of like that movie quote, you know, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. But for me it was, I love the smell of green onions in the morning. Or I, I love the smell of tomatoes in the morning because they smell really, really good. Um, you know, fresh food. Um, but, you know, it got me thinking, you know, why is I love the smell of napalm of all things? Why is that our iconic phrase from the 1970s? What kind of world would we live in if instead of I love the smell of napalm, I love the smell of green onions in the morning was our, our phrase from the 70s? Do you think we'd be living in a better world? I don't know. I, I, I can't picture it. My, my filmmaker brain knows that napalm's a winner and green onions aren't, but... I'd much rather smell green onions. So that's my question to you this week, is what do you love the smell of in the morning? And don't say coffee. Um, tell me what vegetable you love the smell of. Um, yeah, tell me about it in the comments. Um, if you uh, like these videos, you can subscribe to my channel. Um, if you want to know more about the film project that I'm working on, uh, thehandsthatfeedus.ca is where you get updates about that, or you can follow The Hands That Feed Us on Facebook and get a mix of both. So see you next week.